The global climate emergency can no longer be ignored, especially not in Africa, where extreme weather events take a deadly toll on some of the world's most vulnerable communities. But as planet Earth seeks to decarbonize its energy, what is the situation in Africa? How is the continent driving the energy transition? Let's find out in the blue space. Hello, my name is Joanne Joseph, and I'm your host here in the Blue Space, presented by Standard Bank Corporate and Investment Banking. According to United Nations estimates, Africa accounts for less than 4% of global emissions. Yet, our continent suffers the worst effects of rising global temperatures. Africa is also rich in renewable energy potential. The UN estimates that our continent is home to 30% of the mineral reserves that power renewable and low carbon technologies. How can Africa, so rich in solar, wind and hydroelectric power potential, fuel the energy transition? And what role can or should investors play in making this happen? Joining me to talk about this are Dele Kuti, Global Head of Energy and Infrastructure at Standard Bank. NJ Ayuk, Executive Chairman of the Africa Energy Chamber and author of A Just Transition, Making Energy Poverty History with an Energy Mix. And Sarah Collins, founder and owner of Wonderbag, an innovative non-electric slow cooker. Hello to you all. Welcome to the Blue Space. Lovely to be with you today. So I'm going to kick it off with you, NJ. I mean, there's a huge gap between Africa's energy potential and the reality of how long it's taking to get to the point where we can see ourselves exploiting that full potential. What, what explains that gap at this stage? There is a gap that exists, and that gap is access to finance, because we're still dealing with an issue where you have 600 million Africans without any access to electricity, 900 million without any access to clean cooking technologies, most of them women. We have to close that gap between energy access and our ability to drive it up. Access to finance is key. And Africa has been really been underfunded, underexplored, and a lot of projects without financing, but also a lot of financing with without bankable projects. That is the gap that needs to be closed. So let me bring you in here, Dele, because if investment is needed, as NJ tells us, what's the investment case for putting money into renewable energy projects on this continent? No, thank you very much. And I think as NJ you know, kind of mentioned, um, Africa today has a remarkable uh, opportunity when it comes to Africa energy transition because of the abundance of resources available. And that's speaking from solar, you know, wind and hydro, as you did mention, in terms of the abundance of that. You know, interestingly also, I mean, you require about $1.3 trillion of investment to be able to, to, be able to support that in, in, in the continent. So clearly, when you start thinking around energy transition and the demand that is there in the future, Africa is actually the well place, you know, place to be able to do that. Uh, today, why is it this so critical? The issue of energy security is now very important. I mean, we've seen the challenges that kind of come with the Russian Ukraine crisis. You know, with the fact that you're seeing the, you know, things like oil and gas have some shift on global, uh, um, in, in terms of. Uh, a geopolitical situation that could that could impact that. So there is massive investment that could go into you know actually making sure that you can develop the energy where the resources are actually clearly, clearly present. You know, as part of your opening, also, you know, you did mention that about forty percent of the mineral require, you know, to be able to to meet energy transition is clearly there in Africa. So the investment case is there, and we as Standard Bank we are actually pioneering that, you know, as part of the things that we're doing. Uh, we've put a policy in place where we're facilitating, you know, between 250 to 300 billion rand of investment into into renewable energy. You know, we supported, uh, you know, this. I mean, the last two years have actually facilitated close to 40 billion of investment that is in there, uh, 40 billion rand of investment into into renewable energy. So, so the investment case is there from demand perspective, from opportunity to be able to do that. But I think, as NJ mentioned, there's a clear need for reform in most of the continent. Uh, well, we, what kind of reform are we talking about? The challenge Policy you have reform? today, yeah, the challenge you have today is the fact that uh, most of the sovereign in the continent today are, are clearly challenged. You know, why the success story in South Africa is because, you know, most of those early stage of uh, keys were put in place, policy were put in place, transparency were put in place to be able to do that. But when you start going into the sub-Saharan African country, the sovereign is very weak. 
in terms of the fact that, you know, technically most of them are bankrupt. You know, if you kind of think around from investment perspective, when you start looking at the case, the cost of infrastructure to be able to get the right return in the continent is, 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 is clear challenging because you need a lot of infrastructure to be able to do that. The return that, you know, investors would like to see in place in, the, in terms of, you know, the required investment return when you try to do those projects is quite important for, for, for the continent. As somebody who's been involved in Wonderbag so successfully for so many years, are you feeling that, that investment on the ground? Joe, that's a really interesting question. And you talk about successfully driving Wonderbag. It hasn't been successful for 15 years. We've been around for 15 years, but the funding has not been available. And the just energy transition, I'm talking about the 900 million women who don't have access to clean cooking solutions. An age old technology, which I developed called the Wonder Bag, is changing the lives of millions of women across Africa. That's where we need investment. We need investment into the real people who are feeling climate change right now. The innovations belong in Africa. We have them. We don't need to look to Silicon Valley. We actually have that. What we need to do is relook at how do we invest. The South African government introduced the carbon tax in 2019. That's the reason I have investment right now, because I have a business model that stacks up. So, so how, NJ, do we close that gap between Dele, who is providing financing at a very high level, and between the kind of women that, that Sarah is working with on the ground, who need to be a part of the, the just energy transition, but cannot necessarily access Dele directly? We need to cre um, create an enabling environment. This is an African struggle. This is what you have to really look at it from an African perspective. You're not going to get financing if you're the right regulatory environment. It's not there. I always say sign, baby, sign. It shouldn't take so long to approve a project than the time you need to build that project. You need to be able to drive up projects and you really need government to come in. What if we incentivize growth? What if we provided tax subsidies, tax incentives for entrepreneurs and financing looks, finance financiers look at that and say, these are shovel ready projects, these are bankable projects, we need to do that. Holding back on approvals, holding back on permits, going away from the ills of the past like mismanagement and corruption, that can really help drive that. But that's what we need to, to, um, to do because banks need that, entrepreneurs need that space for them to grow, and everyday people can just benefit from that because when you do that, you create jobs, you create opportunity, you create new revenue streams for government, more taxpayers, you're expanding your tax base, and you're just breeding hope into communities that felt or have felt shut down as nothing is there for them. Then you start seeing money coming in from banks like Standard Bank, and you start seeing other people bringing innovative solutions to really deal with Africa's problems. You know, the, the issue of hope is an important one, Dylan. and people will want to know that you have invested in, in some worthwhile uh, en renewable energy projects. Very briefly, your, your final thoughts on this and, and Standard Bank's role in this. I mean, Standard Bank is currently committed to driving energy transition of the continent, and we facilitated real investment in, into the market. Uh, in the last two years, we've actually deployed, you know, between 30 to 40 billion rand, you know, to support renewable projects, especially in South Africa, you know, based on the, some of the bid process that have been put in place. In, in fact, uh, we just recently closed uh, battery projects a renewable project in, in South Africa, where we actually support a client that actually generates renewable energy to be able to kind of support base load energy provider in, in, into the continent. And we're not only doing that in South Africa, we're also doing that in other African countries. We supported a 300 megawatt project, the, the Lake Tokona project in Kenya. We're very keen to continue to do that as, as a bank. In fact, one of the things we've actually you know, assigned ourselves to do is that in the next you know, two to three years, we actually want to facilitate between three to five gigawatt of power into the continent because as NJ mentioned, 
Energy poverty is real in Africa, and we want to make sure that we continue to drive that. And not only driving that at a large scale level, we also want to make sure that at least you know, at a small scale level, we're facilitating deployment of solar deployment uh, in, into various homes in the continent. We're happy to support various initiatives, you know, the likes of things that Wonderbach is doing in the continent to be able to make sure that we drive energy not only at a high level basis, but also to kind of ensure that the community where this is required in order to be able to accelerate growth in the continent where they are standard bank to be able to support those initiatives. What for you are the most promising opportunities for energy infrastructure development, NJ? It's about common sense. It's about pragmatism. It's about using whatever it takes for us to get out of an energy crisis that we are. Because actually we are in an energy crisis. You can you imagine if you had in Europe or the United States, where you have maybe two thirds of the people with no electricity, CNN would be on it every day. <laughs> but right now in Africa, where you, you have two thirds of the people with no electricity, it's okay, that's normal. We don't have to normalize it. The arc of a moral universe is long, but it bends towards justice, but it doesn't bend by itself. It's what we do to drive it working with financial institutions, entrepreneurs, and then that's how we make it to move towards that just transition that we want to see. I'm going to leave it there. Dele, thank you so much for your insights. Sarah, NJ, lovely having all of you to discuss this. And of course, the conversation will continue here. Energy transition is a big topic. There's so much more we could talk about. We'll leave it there for now, though. And thank you to our guests. Thank you all for your insights. I'm Joanne Joseph. Thank you for watching. And until the next time we meet, Take care. Bye-bye.